Hi, I'm going to show you how to determine the overall rate law for a reaction using reaction mechanisms. Uh, so if you are just barely watching this, I strongly re recommend to go to my playlist on rate and watch the videos before this. Otherwise, some of the steps that we're doing here might be confusing. I really broke this down step by step. Okay, so putting everything together, here we go. Uh, first thing that I do, and I'm gonna make a little recipe list over here of the steps that you need to follow. First thing that I do is I add the elementary steps together to get the overall rate, uh, rate equation, not rate equation, sorry, chemical equation. So um, add the elementary steps to write the chemical equation. We wanna see what that looks like to write the chemical equation. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, now, remember, these are our reaction mechanisms. A little reminder, if you look at activation energy, this part right up here, that's the transition state, is where reactions are broken, is where products are formed. It's really unstable, happens really fast. We can't even collect data off of that. We don't know how, here, honest truth, we don't know how reactants are broken and how products are formed. So this that you see right here is a theory, is the intuition and imagination of a chemist. They're pretending that that's the process of how reactants break and how products form. This right here are individual steps called molecularity. Okay, um, so when we add these together, it will give us the true chemical reaction. Let's see if there's anything the same on both reactant and product sides that will cancel. I see F, that will cancel. Um, doesn't look like anything else will cancel. Now notice this fluorine was a product. It then became a reactant. It was consumed, cancels out. That is called an intermediate. So a little side note here, fluorine is an intermediate. It's something that the chemist made up that just came from their brain. Um, so let's add up everything we have remaining, reactants and products. We are going to have, I've got two of the NO2 plus F2 right there yields, and then I've got two of the FNO2. Okay, so there's my first step. The second step is we need to write down from the rate determining step, the rate equation. So this is from the rate determining step. You'll recall that a reaction can't go any faster than the slowest elementary step, than the, small, the slowest step in the entire process. So let's write the rate law for the rate determining step. Okay, um, so I look at this, it's always the slow step. That's always um, going to be your rate determining step. Easy, just find slow, bam, done. That's the rate determining step. So the rate law for this, remember rate depends on the reactants. Um, and because this is all imaginary, this all came from the chemist's mind, we can do a fudge. I can use the number of reactants, and that's the overall order of the reaction. So in essence, the coefficients are simply the exponents. They're the orders in the rate law. Um, the only place you can do this is when we're doing reaction mechanisms, when you're doing molecularity. If you have legitimate data, whoa, 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 you have to use math to determine those exponents M and N. But it's because we're in the theory world, we can have this fudge and um, just take those um, coefficients as the exponents. So rate law will be rate equals K times concentration of NO2 to the first order, because that's understood to be a one, times the concentration of F2 also to the first order. So our overall rate law now depends on that rate determining step. One thing I always do is I take a look at that to make sure there are no intermediates. Every species that you see in that rate law has to be in this equation. So I've got NO2 and F2. Okay, great. So here it is. The true overall rate law of what we observed in nature will be rate equals K times NO2 to the first order. I don't have to write the one. It will be understood to be first order to the power of one times the concentration of F2. And there we have it. There you have it. We're done. So uh, let's write down step three. The overall, oops, overall 
rate law. Okay, so this is for the real chemical equation. This is the equation that we observe in real life. Um, the overall rate law equals the rate law from the rate determining step. Rate determining, oops, sorry, determining step. So if you understand all the pieces of what I talked about, wow, you're good to go. If you don't know how to do any one step of what I discussed, go back and watch my other videos. Um, now, there is a disclaimer on this. This simplicity only works if the slow step is the first step. We say it again. If the slow step is the first step, super easy. You just write the rate law for that slow step and that is going to be the rate law for the overall reaction. Um, if the slow step is preceded by fast step, if there's a fast step above it, then it takes a little more work. So watch my video on that. Okay, watch the next video um, for the slow step following a fast step. Just takes a little bit more work. Okay, good job. You doing this means that you are in the heart of chemistry and I'm really proud of you. Good job, have a nice day.